What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. We are out here doing some walleye fishing today and uh, <clears throat> we're probably gonna be fishing a deep jig bite of some kind. I have not been on this lake in a little while though, but the first lake we stopped at today, I went to all the spots I normally see walleyes, nothing there. Um, and there was a whole bunch of cloudiness in the water, meaning that lake is turning over. And this lake that we're on today is a little bit colder now. We switched lakes at about 7 a.m. And uh, it's colder and we are seeing a few fish on deep rock, which is definitely what we're gonna be doing today and definitely the pattern we're gonna be fishing. And uh, I'm not seeing a lot of fish, which I'm not sure what's going on here. But um, the goal is here, drive around a little bit, probably go down to the other end of the lake and uh, look for some of these pods in that, I'd say 28 to 32 foot range. And hopefully pitch some jigs and minnows back at them, spot lock and pitch it back, kind of standard procedure. Um, but a lot of times this time of year on this lake, we have a very good average size and definitely some large walleye. So stay tuned. We're probably going to give you guys some details on uh, kind of what we're doing and all that good stuff. And hopefully find a big pod here and uh, slap some big walleyes around. Stay tuned. Shot. Mitchell's got a walleye on. How's it feel, Mitchell? Uh, looks like it could be a decent fish. Oh, I like it. I like yes. it a lot. I like it. Talk to me. What is going on, guys? As you can see, I'm very underdressed and absolutely freezing. Yeah, Mitchell's this is the, the only guy who can be 29 degrees out and he'll come dressed in I, jeans and t-shirt. I forgot my stuff, so the you mental fortitude I have to be out here doing this, Tom, is just incredible. We might have to do a whole separate video on your mental strength. I mean, that's a good idea. But, so right now we are pitching jigs back on some deep, deep stuff. Look and that, that looks like a that's nice That's exactly wall. what we're after right there. Just a nice fish. Oh, just yeah. a Yes. Work. First one of the day. Yep. We'll take it. We're actually on lake number two. Yeah, and, that's how that's and, how good it's going right now. And the reason we are on lake number two is because we looked at lake number one and it was 100% turning over and we said, no See thank you. you. <laughs> we try elsewhere. Awesome fish to start though. We'll give yes. you guys a look. All right, take a look. This Is this not what you go walleye fishing for? Just an absolute fatty. Nice, what do you say, 24, 25 inch fish? 24, 25, healthy yeah, fall build on them. awesome. So we're Punching gonna get them back and yeah, hope to catch more. Like I said, cast some jigs and sucker minnow. Fun bite. Fish on Mitchell! The old J-Rap. On the old Hyper Rattle. You want to grab that net? Feels like a good one. Watch out, Surly. I was messing around on my phone and you're fishing. And look what Ooh. happened. Yeah, I was kind of motoring around and we just found a little pod. Instead of just spot locking on a little pod for a while, I was like, Fish. oh, it's a good one too. Good, good one. Wally. Look at that. That just makes me so happy, Mitchell. <sighs> I was like, you know what? As long as there's only like four fish there, we'll try dropping a hyper or the uh, yeah, the hyper rattle on them. Let's see what happens. And look at that. It took about two yanks and we caught one. That makes me very happy. And quality, quality fish for sure right there. And this is what you can expect a lot of times when you're fishing this deep rock in the fall. This lake is post turnover now, and uh, we have water temps that are 54 degrees. And uh, I'm digging it. I gotta get a player's to unhook this guy quick. If you just kind of see a couple of fish sitting there, a lot of times it pays off just to drop something you can fish real quick versus kind of spot locking and it's trying to sit over, you know, three fish for a while. But look at that beautiful, thick, healthy Northwoods walleye right there. That's what it's about. Awesome. I love fall. I love fall walleyes. Let them go. All right, so we talked a little bit about when to use both these baits, and today is kind of a perfect example to really kind of go in depth and talk about it a lot. When do you jig? when do you fish something really fast like a hyper rattle. And what we're seeing today is a lot of times when we get out here on these humps, we'll see like 
two arcs here, arc over here, two arcs over here, another arc over here, and it looks good. It looks like there's a lot of fish in there, kind of spread out over a spot, right? So you can kind of spot lock, and you can start pitching backwards, right? And uh, most of the time, we always try to spot lock upwind from fish. Not a lot of wind today, but it always helps just for boat control and uh, ease of fishing and really feeling bites. But um, you, know, you can kind of pitch back at a variety of different angles and know you're around fish. Now, the other scenario, which is definitely what's happening today, is basically we're getting out here and we're driving around these spots. And instead of seeing like, you know, 20 fish kind of spread out over this whole hump, what we're seeing is like one big stack of 10 fish on one corner of the hump, meaning that 90% of that small hump is void of fish. There's just no fish on it, right? So it doesn't do us a lot of good to fish something like a jig um, and kind of fan cast, right? And when we're fishing a lot of these jigs, you know, in three eighths or half ounce, these Kalen's Google Eye jigs. It takes, a, it's a slow process when you're fishing this deep of water. So you're casting out, I mean, it's taking 10, 12 seconds for the bait to get down. You're popping it up and it's a very slow fall, hits bottom, popping it up, it's a very slow fall. So it's very time consuming to cover water at a deeper depth with these. Extremely effective way to fish. I mean, Mitch caught one on that right away. Uh, but a lot of these pods that we're kind of getting into, what we're seeing is, like I said, it's just that big mound of fish on one very small corner of that spot. So instead of working that whole hump, basically what we're doing is, and uh, we're kind of just seeing those fish and we're dropping right on them right away and that's been effective. Now, today the issue is not whether fish are biting or not. We've actually, I've actually missed three bites already off camera on a jig. So as long as we can stay around those fish, we're getting bites, right? It's just a matter of what's the quickest way to get on those fish. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of the pattern. So, you know, if you're, see, if you're running into the situation a lot where you're fishing these humps that are, you know, you know, 10 yards by 20 yards wide, these kind of these, you know, smaller deep water humps, which a lot of them are in the North Woods, you get lakes that's set up like this with these small deep humps. Um, you know, and you're only seeing just one or two mounds of fish on a spot, you know, definitely go with something like that right there. And it's gonna be much more efficient, much quicker to get those bites. Dropping down, big pod. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. That's what I'd be saying every Saturday night. Let's go. Are you serious? Yep, fish on. Damn, dude, I didn't even get that. You guys saw how quick that was. Nice. Spot them on the old graph. Drop a hyper rattle down to them. Boom, fish on. We might be hyper rattling, Mitchell. Grab that net. Ooh, that's a good one. Grab the net, grab the net. Grab Watch out, it's really. Oops, really move. Now, if that's not instantaneous and fun, I don't know what is. I think we might, so what we're seeing today, and this is a very good point to make, um, the same thing is happening over and over. We are seeing fish on the graph, like one pod, and uh, we are dropping down to them with jigs. And if they stay there long enough, we are catching them. Um, but they're, they're moving around super fast. So when they're moving around super fast, you can either do one or two things. You can do something that covers a lot of water, or just drive around till you see them and drop right in them, and that's the one way that you know you're right in fish. So they're obviously biting today. It's just we can, it's difficult to keep your bait around fish, and we're doing it with the big motor. We're not fishing unless we see fish. And uh, the jig thing, great way to catch fish if you got fish that are staying still on a hump. But the jig's so slow, much slower presentation um, that it takes you know you got to kind of sit there and camp it out for a little bit. With that hyper rattle, we can just go pod to pod, catch these big beautiful fall walleyes, and on to the next pod. Let's let them go. All right, so we're driving around looking for fish, more to drop this hyper rattle on. And uh, one big tip, now think about when you're fishing like 10 feet of water and you're marking fish vertically, right? You know, you know those fish are right under your boat, right? Well, when you're fishing a lot of this stuff that's like 30 feet, your cone is much wider. How wide is it? I don't know. Um, how, you know, how much ground are you picking up in 32 feet of water with your cone on a helix? I'm not sure. But one thing that can happen is you can see fish and you're not right on top of them. The most effective thing with this bait is when there's a fish right here and it slaps down right next to them. It's just like instinctual that they have to do something, right? So that's the goal. Now, one thing you'll see a lot is like, you might see the arcs on your screen and they'll kind of be like a faint blue color. And that means that those fish are a little bit off to the side. So one thing I'll always do is I'll see those marks and I just kind of kick it in neutral and I wait till a lot of times they come up and normally the highest point 
if on that mark that you see where it turns bright red, that is right where that fish is, right? So a lot of times, like I said, I'll see the fish and I'll just kind of kick it in neutral, let my boat drift, and I'll be like, okay, 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 okay. And the second that mark, you can tell it kind of crests out and uh, turns bright red, that's when we drop. And a lot of times what you want to see, I always like dropping right next to my deucer, and I know my deucer is right here. So what I do is I drop that thing down super close to the boat. A lot of times I'll kick it in reverse just to stall my boat out. And I can see this bait going down on my graph right now. And a lot of times what you'll see is that whole big arcs. You know, if you have like, you're dropping through a stack of five fish, what you'll see is those five red marks, they'll just start diving down right when you see that bait get into that school. And that's those fish chasing that bait down. And a lot of times what you'll end up doing is you'll crack it once, you know, that's kind of that big trigger for them. It'll hit bottom, you'll crack it again and you'll have a fish on. And it's just super effective, but it's those small things. It's not just being close to them that, that catches a lot of fish, it's being right on top of them that catches a lot of fish. And don't be afraid that when you see those fish in the graph and you're not sure if you're right on top of them or not, just to drop away point, do a circle, come back through at a different angle and say, yep, that, we're right on top of the fish here, drop them down, right? And because uh, a lot of times they'll, they'll be sitting still um, until you get down to them. Once you get down to them, they'll start moving around. So it's really that first, that first drop that is absolutely crucial with this style of fishing. All right guys, we just located a real nice pot of fish. So we're putting the hyper rattles away for a second. They're kind of right on a spot where they're kind of holding. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, but uh, we're gonna pitch some jigs back on them, see what happens. fish on so like Tom said we're uh, as you can see anyways we're catching fish two different ways one with a jig and a minnow a good one. it feels like a good one and a hyper rattle so the problem is how do you know which one to use right well when you find fish and you drop on them and they scatter immediately you have to use hyper rattle you can't just sit on them with the jig this pod we kind of had the uh, we had a guess that they were sitting so we uh, cast some jigs out like we kind of talked about, sometimes you, ooh, ooh nice, nice fish, fish, nice fish. We'll grab the net. I'll grab the net. Thank you, sir. Dude, look at that. He's all tuckered out. We got him. Oh, just a fatty. Good. That is what we're after. Absolutely, man. Small walleye, big, healthy, thick chunkers, dude. So much fun. Awesome. Yeah, let's get him back. You want to take him? Yeah, let's get him back, though. All right guys, well that is gonna do it for today's quick little video here. Um, we only had about a couple hours this morning to come out and catch some fish. And once we kind of got on that pattern of lighting them up with the hyper rattles, and uh, if we are seeing a bunch of fish pitching jigs back, that was definitely the deal. Uh, but it's still mid morning right now, and we've already been on two lakes. I'm not sure what we're gonna do the rest of the day, but uh, something different. Mitchell, how was it? It was good, it was good. I'm freezing cold, I'm hungry. Let's go, we gotta go. Mitchell has not enough layers on. What a what a noob to fall fish. <laughs> now he just forgot his stuff, but fall's definitely here. We got nights that are getting down in the upper 20s, and uh, a lot of these lakes are gonna turn over, and I think the bite's really gonna start kicking off good. I mean, today was definitely a little bit better, but a lot of times right after turnover, it takes a little bit of time for those fish to kinda, you know, regain a pattern that they're gonna be using, right? Because that turnover is just a mass mixing of water. Fish can be anywhere. They can be deep, shallow, anywhere in between. And uh, as water stabilizes, that is what you want. You want stable water and that normally means fish kind of you know all getting on the same pattern all doing the same thing and then hopefully us catching a lot of them so as Mitchell said we're gonna get out of here it was a good morning of fishing I appreciate you guys watching drop some comments down below on what you guys want to see and uh, yeah we'll stay tuned for more we'll see you next time